Welcome back, 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 back to The Lunchable with Chandon Clinton, Jared, Alexander Montgomery, and John. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about books today. Oh, boy. Just books. Yep. <laughs> not Playboy. Oh, those that's not a book, that's a magazine. That's literature, though. It, it, it's I've good learned. reading. Someone is already out of this podcast. <laughs> so, uh, just I've like, already broken one rule. It was a lot smoother last week without you. So uh, before we uh, get started here, I think it's been a while since we've done a little plug for ourselves. Because those 3D6 guys keep getting our little intro all to themselves. Yeah, They're taking all yeah. the credit. Way to go, guys. <laughs> letting us use your music for free and then taking up all of our spot to... Plug in people. Yeah, you guys are dece. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I love you so much. For those of you who are new viewers, all three of you, we are Cheese Boy Comics, located on Rainbow and Windmill, and our phone number is 702-938-5020. We are open every day of the week from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., except on Monday where we do stuff like this. 24-hour cheese. 24-hour cheese. We're pretty much always here. Oh, and for the people that listen to our podcast that don't live in Nevada, our store is in Las Vegas because I know we have people in California listening to us, and I don't know why. Yeah. What, How did that Because happen? we're amazing, probably? Of course. I like, why would that. you Jeez. not listen to this podcast? Did we confirm if they listened to more than one, or did they get, like, five minutes in and just, it's like, yeah. let's <laughs> just knock us out? It's, it's just that one guy, and he's like, hey, you guys want to hear a bunch of losers ramble on about <laughs> cops? Look at these guys. Look at Lou Mule. Just linked it to a bunch of his friends. These guys are really bad at what they do. Ah. Uh, Sounds about right. Let's give them another view. Let's give them <laughs> <laughs> the pity view. Anyway, let's go. Anyways, let, let's, okay. So uh, we've, off topic. we've been we've we're we're, we're rambling off topic. Uh, Jared, uh, do you want to leave us off on uh, what's your favorite book ever? My favorite book is I don't read. You don't read. Ooh, oh, fantastic. Right. Okay, well, <laughs> great start to this, this podcast. This, this this is what happens when I read. I get very bored with things that I read. Like I try to put time in, and I've tried time and time again to do so. Um, one book that I got about, oh, I don't know, hundred and so odd pages in that I liked was, uh, Black Company. It is about mercenaries in the medieval times, you know, sorcerers, wizards, stuff like that. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Alrighty. Alex, what's your, uh, what's your favorite book? Um, I'm into, like, fantasy books. That's most of the books I've ever read. Uh, my favorite book is Scar Knight. Scar Knight. It's, uh... Is it a knight who has a scar on his face? Who scarred the knight? No, it's it's about like um, <laughs> medieval Batman. When he was younger, he got mugged. <laughs> <laughs> no, like angels, they live on a, a city that's dominated predominantly by the church, and there's only one angel left after mm. like a, a war, and he's like a like a teenager, and they kind of keep him locked away in his room, and he doesn't get to do anything. Um, but their city is <laughs> teenage angel. <laughs> teenage angel. Like, We're taking your angel TV away <laughs> and your angel internet. He can barely fly. It's kind of sad. <laughs> but Jesus, uh, no buttons. It sounds very, very emo. Yeah. I'm uh, kind of sad right now. Anyway, to continue all. with it. Cause well, that's not everything. I'm sure. Okay. Um, there, the city goes to prom. Too. Shut up, Jamie. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. The city is ruled by the church because it's built on, on top of their hell. Because the entire city is on chains that cover a giant pit that leads straight into the ground. Oh, so like the, the at the, the bottom of the pit is hanging is on their chains. Hell. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Imagine like just a hole in the ground, but then chains cover it like from one end to the other, and they're just crossed, and the entire city is built on top of the giant chain links. That's, that's like, pretty cool. Those are so really there's, there's holes in the road, and it just leads into an abyss, and people just try and like avoid it. But <laughs> five o'clock Actually, rush hours, walk not the town. Like, like a huge problem in the city is like structural collapse, and an entire block of the city will fall into. Can hell. you imagine just like going to work and having to work like a shitty nine to five, and then all of a sudden your building <laughs> drops into hell? <laughs> just like well. I, I wanted a you know a couple of days off, but not like this. Fuck it, better than work. <laughs> so, Channel, what is your favorite book? Well, we Mr. didn't even. Did you finish, Alex? Uh, John's just kind of like, hey, you that, don't. That's to... about it. With that's like, it. without spoiling anything in the book. How come you get to be last? What if I wanted to be last? Did, well, you get to, uh, fine. No, I'll say John, let me, I will take a bullet for us. Okay. Uh, I would never uh, do that. I'd actually put you in front of me, <laughs> and then probably Alex in front of you. Oh, yeah. great! Anything to save me, great. and then I'd be behind Channel. <laughs> he, I can't fight with him. His beard is bigger than mine. It's true. It's kind of like the the way that the facial hair goes. You're, you're, avoiding, oh. you're avoiding the question, sir. Am okay. I? Oh, no. Let's, let's answer the, the question. question. So my favorite <laughs> book is uh, it's a book by an author called Dan Abnett. He uh, he's also a comic book writer. He does stuff for uh, DC Comics, Marvel Comics. Um, he's best known for his uh, his comic called uh, the Dead Wardians. 
But he is also a author of the Black Library, who produces the Warhammer and Warhammer 40K series. And uh, my favorite book that he that that like of all times is Only in Death, and it's part of a trilogy known as uh, the Gaunt's Ghosts series. And it it's pretty much it's like a sci-fi haunted house. <laughs> so like the Gaunt's Ghosts are known as the Tanith first and only. And their specialty is stealth. So, like, they're a stealth unit. So, you know, they move around and they're, they've been, like, uh, described as ghosts. And they ha- their leader is called uh, Colonel Kamazar uh, Abram Gaunt. So, Gaunt's ghosts. Kind of mixed. Ooh. So, they get sent to a world called Jago. And uh, they have to destroy the arch enemy, the Forces of Chaos, which is the main antagonist of uh, the, the whole 40, uh, 40K series as a whole. And they have to hold a... Uh, like a large fortress that kind of looks like a castle mansion and it's dubbed the house at the end of the world and I think it's called Heinzerus, Hinzerus I think is the name of the castle so pretty much like they occupy this mansion castle structure it's completely empty but they notice something that's really weird which uh, the world hasn't been inhabited by Imperials which are the, the good guys the Imperials hasn't been inhabited for like centuries like like hundreds and hundreds of years has not been inhabited, but the lights are still on. And as they like defend the house from the enemy, they kind of are haunted. Like uh, comrades who have fallen in battle kind of reappear. They hear uh, people who are like walking or screaming or moaning or like really sh- like strange scrapings coming through the wall. Uh, the the part that I like the most about this book is that. Uh, you you see like internal conflicts between characters that have been established for years and years and years like this is an old trilogy or not trilogy but an old series that's been going on for a while so you get to see like the inner tor- turmoils because like the house produces like these weird like uh illusions that these characters are having from the past it's from past books so all in all this is about space ghosts. Space okay. ghosts. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Wow. John. <laughs> Sorry that I actually read. When, <laughs> Sorry that my discussion got interrupted by you guys making jokes no, about stuff. No. <laughs> I thought you were done with yours. I just feel it's, like that'd be a good hundred pages for me, you know. <laughs> I think that would be worth it. Solve hundred and you would just stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when you said, like, a uh, space haunted house, I mean, you thought space ghosts with them. Like, got me thinking of that one superhero, Space Ghost, who had that Space Ghost. Sh- 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 like, Zorak running around the house <laughs> and trying to murder people. It's All right, John, uh, what's your favorite book? Since my I book, rambled on forever. My book is the meta of books. And what? It's, it's Italo Calvino's If on a Winter's Night of Traveler, which is. You were a, telling me about this book. It's about a book this. of you reading books. I. Mm, interesting. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. So he continued to read the sentence about a sentence of another book that also had sentences. But really, it's like I'm you get. It's like you get a book. Fool. <laughs> it's you buying the book. If on a winter's night, a traveler, and it's like you're reading it and you're really getting gross, gross into it, and then like it just stops and you're like, what the hell is this? And so you go back to the bookstore, get a different book, and get try to get a recall of the book, and then like you get a different book instead. You're just like. Well, now I just want to know that uh, the other book that I was reading, what it actually was in that book. So you get that book. It's confusing. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your favorite book. Who's, what's the name of it? Uh, if on a Winter's Night, a Traveler. By? Italo Calvino. Italo Calvino, okay. It's an old, old book. So we've, we've uh, me and, me, actually the group as a whole, as in like myself, Alex, you, Nathan, or not Nathan, but uh, Al and... Uh, no, yeah, Jared, you're not part of this. You don't read. Uh, we we have kind of this. Uh, we we've, we've got this 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 rumor mill book of ours. Uh, the House of Leaves. It is very very. Al very introduced good. it to me Alex, Alex, who introduced it to me, and you've known about it. I've known about it, but I haven't read. I haven't touched the book physically. So the the book's concept is like a little bit of a story in its own because it was conceived through the internet of like bits and pieces of people putting it together because it was scattered into a bunch of different pieces and it wasn't written on pages it was written on like envelopes and postcards and like rulers and random book pages and people were finding it and piecing it together because it was meant to be found and put together because it's like this guy's there's, on heavy amounts of acid as he's writing this book. There's, <laughs> there's like a page in this thing that doesn't make sense about anything, but then there's other people so, like, hey, I found this part of a book. It sounds like it fits together with your part of the book. Okay, so pretty much what the story is, is it, it, you follow this guy 
and he is looking for a house to live in. And his friend tells him about a house where an old man had just passed away and his, his room is available. So he moves into the room and he starts to kind of like piece together what happened to this old man. And he finds like bits and pieces, kind of like how Alex was explaining how the book was created. That's how the story is kind of like told. The guy finds like bits and pieces of uh, a story through like uh, script, like mad, like delirious scribbles on post-it notes and, and mm-hmm. envelopes and stuff like that. You're meant to like this book. This book does something incredible, which I think a lot of authors should take note of. Is it, it fully immerses you as the character. You don't like. I don't know if you noticed this, but as I was reading it, it does not mention the main character's name often. It's like maybe once every, maybe once every like 85 pages or something like that. Actually, so, that's not true. It's the main character, Johnny, but he's talking directly to you. Yeah, it, it's kind of like that. It's, it's me. Okay, imagine that the book is a mockumentary. And, and man, you were, man, you were standing right here. You were like, as I'm explaining the story to you, that's how the story is being told through the book. Yeah, I want to check this out. It's it's ex- it's really good. I read it within like two days. I like sat down and I was like, I'm going to read this. Because they hyped it up so much and I was like, this book cannot be as good as it was. Absolutely was. The thing is, it's it's Johnny reading the book that he finds in the apartment. He's explaining to you the book that is The House of Leaves, which is the documentary. Mm-hmm. So as you're reading the book, you're reading about Johnny telling you the story of the book that he's finding. So it's you reading about him reading. That's like my book, except... <laughs> <laughs> but is there a spark notes? <laughs> I'm sure there is. Actually, maybe. Actually, he, he does uh, do this thing where uh, he has poets read... His stories. So I'm looking up right now House of Leaves. I see House of Leaves sex ed- or section. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, House of Leaves second edition. This is why I can read 100 pages because like it takes me <laughs> hours. Um, then there's also the whole or the the whale stow letters mm-hmm. from House of Leaves. Yep, is that, I know what that is. anything? Uh, the whale stone letters were, I believe, like it's a offshoot of the book that describes other letters that weren't like that Johnny didn't find in the book. Okay, yep, I believe. Gotcha. So like so, what Alex, Alex has the complete edition. It's the whole the book as a whole as it was meant to be, and then like in the text of the book, there's things that were supposed to be crossed out, removed, or changed for the second edition, mm-hmm. which is the much more sure uh, shorter shorter <laughs> shorter 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 version of the book that's more like cut to the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the whole is intense. You it, get, you get to read like it's like reading several different books at once. You're reading totally different stories. It's very creepy. John, you've been having your hand up this whole entire time. What do you want? You said something about the Kindle and it was very hard to read. I was going to ask you guys, what do you think would you rather read a physical copy of the book or an actual Kindle? Cuz I hate Kindles. Okay, so I've I've had this fight with my mother one too many times cuz she's I've been asking me if I've wanted a Kindle like before I got one. Mm-hmm. And I've been like I want a physical copy. I want to be able to feel the way a page yes. turns. Thank you. I want to I want to be able to smell the pages and I want to actually have a physical copy of the book that way my book doesn't die cuz I didn't charge it. Kindle yeah. Kindle though it has a great battery life. Dies. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't tell you how many times I've been in class and I've just been like all right, I'm done with all my assignments. I'm just going to read until I get to go to my next class or I get to take my break in between classes. Mm-hmm. And my battery thing will flash. It'll be like, hey, uh, charge your Kindle. And I'll be like, you know what, Kindle? Don't fucking tell me what to do. I own you, bitch. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to die. And then I'm like, oh, no, you. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I have control now. Yeah, because like, with actual physical books, it's like when you're done with it, you can put it on a shelf. You can't put a Kindle on a shelf. That's true. My, I have a whole bookcase, but it's mainly dedicated to just Warhammer. That's fine. It looks impressive. It looks good. You can't that way, when like, I bring the ladies over, I can swab them being like, hey, bitch, I can read too. I don't like, have just an average-sized penis. Okay, so like, I'm going to make a point right here. I'm looking over at Jared's phone. He just ordered House of Leaves on Amazon. Would you? Okay, okay, okay. Dude. That's, that's not the part I wanted to get to. I look over, and it says, all right, House of Leaves, $12.95, shipping Handling thirteen ninety nine. I didn't pay thirteen ninety nine for shipping. It was Amazon Prime nonsense, but I got the, the uh, I don't know. I'm gonna get in like probably five. Did you months. get the whole the whole edition? I just got whatever they had on there. Okay, I'm gonna okay. try it out. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna get hundred pages in. And see it's how it's I like one it. of the books I would I, definitely recommend. I'm just to gonna go ahead and say this now. Anybody that's listening should definitely go try and find a copy of House of Leaves or read it online. If you can't find a physical copy, it's an amazing book. Super intimidating to read. Prepare yeah, to be, be scared to yeah. read a book. Be yeah. warned. I'm okay, gonna move on okay. with a book called S. It was written by um, I forget, I forget the co-author, but the other author was J.J. Abrams. The I movie, don't understand the books like director. that. But I heard it was really good, and I got it from my mother for uh, Christmas. Mm-hmm. And like how this book is written is like, 
it they they made the book look like it was really really old like a library book so mm -hmm. they have the uh, three decimal numbers on like the bridge and it has like some torn pages and looks kind of worn out is it one of those books that's supposed to look old but it's not old yes okay but, i got you i like books like that too i'm not gonna and lie. so the book itself it's an entire story but then in the margins there's a, a conversation going on between two people mm -hmm. and like apparently the person who wrote the book in the fictional world is like really really mysterious and he's been missing for like years okay and this this college chick picks up the book and she's like she opens it up to start reading and there's someone who's like uh, putting pieces together in the book mm -hmm. and she's like hey who are you and then the guy writes back once she returns the book like oh what the fuck are you doing and then it like goes back and forth and they try to solve Get this mystery book. together Stop it. Stop it. and it's really cool because you can read it like three different three different ways right three times okay. and it's crazy it's really cool that's interesting books it's books cool. like that where it's like the book is like eight dollars but you get like a lot of value out of it mm. that's what we magic players like to call value well, then, then again the book also yeah. has a trailer has what it has a trailer movie. like an actual like like trailer yeah a trailer because it, it's jj abrams the guy who directed star trek oh, okay yeah right. hey, alex what kind of books do you like to read uh like fantasy Fantasy? It's it's always been my like go to like I never go really wrong with fantasy. So you won't read like Fifty Shades of Grey. No, I Damn. Read, that's well, good fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's my fantasy. <laughs> um, no. I know I said I'm not much of a book reader, but when I was in high school, I, I would read a lot of books on serial killers. Serial killers. I, what was that? I was. Can we leave leave the building now? Leave. Go. Go. Wait, go. Wait wait wait. What are serial killers? Serial killers. You know, serial. Serial. Oh, oh, I thought you meant. Okay, I thought no. that was like serial like, crushers. Oh, no, I. I yeah. Yeah. Serial killers are super interesting. Like Jared, they, you seem like one of those guys who like when you had to do a book report, you just did a book report on Captain Underpants. <laughs> I. Oh, you know what's you funny? Know. You say I actually never did book reports. I just never. No. God. I just being an English writer sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like the the Zodiac book that I read was, it, all the stuff that it gave you mm -hmm. in it was it, like the codes that he had created for the cops and like his plans on what he was doing and you know his drawings they added all of these things that were you know released not to the public but to the cops yeah like, like oh. when you turn a page and you see his letter he wrote in his own language that he wrote mm -hmm. and then the cops are like we could never <laughs> decipher this well, i can't speak it's is about zodiac the zodiac killer okay and it it was one of the most interesting things i've read like it's i have to have something that grabs my attention because I'm a very visual person myself, mm -hmm. what if I can just it it blew my mind. Nice. Like if I could just read something like that, that's that's how my high school years were. We're just books of serial killers, and that's why I'm a lonely man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all these. So people. you so we would say like reportive kind of books, but like that are reporting about something really interesting. Yeah, like very informative. Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, just just about the human psyche and the mind all together. Because mm -hmm. I mean, they could go into you know why he did it, how it was, and it was just it's. It's almost like reading a documentary. Yeah. What about you? What, what kind of books do you like reading? Uh, if we haven't noticed throughout all of the podcasts I've been on, I've got a massive hard on for Warhammer. A massive. A massive. Like, massive. Like big on. enough for a field mouse is what we're talking about. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty big. massive. Massive. Especially for Warhammer. I, I, I like, I, like, I, I like sci-fi, but I'm very specific on what I read. Like Warhammer is just enough gritty, but good like story and good characters, not just like... I have a chainsaw sword. Stab you, room, like a. But wait, I'm you know, your father. I'm your father. But they though. all die. <laughs> I, I've, uh, I've read all the Halo books. I've read a giant chunk of Warhammer 40k. Uh, I've also have been a giant fan of the Hellgate London book series because it's way better than the game ever was. We we know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and then uh, I. Uh, my attempt at being one of those nerdy kids at reading Star Wars. <laughs> but why is it... Okay, so Jared passed his phone to me, and he called me a nerd, but the post topic says murd. <laughs> I'm not an English major. <laughs> Leave me out of this. Murdered? Anyways, I, uh, Murdered. I tried reading the Star Wars Clone Trooper series. I couldn't do it because they said crap a lot. It was one of those books where it was like, crap every other ten pages. Oh, that's I was weird. just like, oh man, they can't say fuck, shit, piss, anything else besides crap. <laughs> completely off topic that was one thing the Guardians of Galaxy comic when that came out I was mm. really into it and like the second issue they tried to pull Battlestar Galactica and they had one word like Battlestar Galactica had frack right they had that and every other word was that word that's, and it was the most annoying thing that's how Warhammer is like their curse words like uh, the Tanith born because uh, like the like Warhammer encompasses so many different worlds so there's a shit ton of cultures and whatnot. 
Uh, the Tanith Regiment is made up of three different races of people. You have the Tanith, the Vervenheim, and the Belladons. So the Tanith use the word fat in place of fuck. Gak in, the, in place of shit or crap. And Belladons just say fuck. So yeah. I understand your, your, your hatred of like made up words that are supposed to inner piece like a, a curse word i just i want to bang my head against the wall every time i read it it's like please just say fuck for the love of fuck it reminds <laughs> me of firefly where they say go ram it instead of go ram it, go it. Ram it. Go ram you it. mean, they do. You they mean say... like how in rugrats he said dang flam it oh yeah <laughs> that was an old guy so it's like ah you're funny you know yeah. he also would have said fuck you to that too if anybody so, else is a firefly fan you'll understand what i'm talking about <laughs> they, say, they say go ram guess it. what God nobody damn. is hey you know what sad human waste of flesh Oh, oh, uh, gee. Uh, I don't know. Inf- informative books are really cool, but uh, I've never gotten into fantasy because there's not, not any that I can just. Fantasy is a right weird case. genre of books. It is. It's like 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 there's way too many like indie authors. There's way too many like different universes. Like the most popular ones that I know of right now are the uh, the Forgotten Realms, which is like the D and D their their story. I know that uh, Warhammer Fantasy has a big following. Um, there's just it's way too easy to make up your yeah. own world. Yeah. That like there's so many fantasy books you can walk into any kind of bookstore and go to the fantasy. Shameless section. plug. That's what I'm doing right now. There's there's thousands of different authors that just write about the same stuff, but it's all different at exactly. the same time. It's like what which exactly. one can I get into? So I really like informative books, I guess. But uh, fiction is pretty good too. But there's this one book that when you said serial killers, I remembered it and it was like you didn't even know what they were what? When no, no, I no, said I, I said, you, no no i thought you oh, said God. that like i read a lot from serial killers and i was like is that some sort of website or something <laughs> uh, www.seriokillersmusthang.com it, it's a book called uh the psychopath test have you guys heard of that yes no? it's so good my mom read this and she it, is a cop it's pretty cool because like it starts it's it's a book about how if there's psychopaths in our just everyday life. Right. But not just the killy, killy, stab, stabs kind. Just, like, really strange, out of the ordinary No, people. no, no, just, like, like heads of state and shit like that. Oh. And so it starts... Sociopaths. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I gotcha, yeah. I gotcha. Alex, what is that series of books that I saw in your room that me and you had a girlgasm about? Oh, did you hear girlgasm? Um, Those purple books that we got from, like, the fucking, uh... From uh, the book fair. As you know Del Toro. Del Toro. Oh my goodness. Have you read these? No. Okay, so I, I what, like, when we were in elementary school, like, they had those book fairs and stuff. I, I hated the book fairs because it was always like, read Harry Potter or buy a really shitty tornado spinny can. Oh my god. I buy I one every that. time. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every time. time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. But there was, a, there was a, I went one time because, like, my little sister wanted to go. And by little, I mean she's a year younger than me. Mm-hmm. So my dad was like, all right, well, it's elementary school. I can't just let my kid walk home. You have to come with us. So I saw this book series, and it was, like, a giant collection. And it was, like, five books or six? It's a total of 15. Yeah, okay, so there was five in, in, one, in one of those little box okay. set collections. Oh, it, it and go, it's called it Del in, Toro. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's, well, it's legit, it's, like... Okay, as as an elementary schooler, uh, slash Scooter. 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 Okay. Scooter. God, elementary <laughs> school. I was gonna say students. quit, but I started with an S. I'm like, squit. Is talking about how I, I talk. I can't talk. Okay, I, I can't talk. Sorry, I'm gonna okay. slow down a little bit. All right. Okay. Let's, Such let's, words. Let's go down to here. Okay. Such let's, words. Let's, we're gonna go down to here. Down here. We're gonna come down to my level ten. All right. Okay. We're, we're let's down do here. it. Okay. Uh, elementary schooler slash school. Oh my god. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to. I'm, I'm an English major. <laughs> okay. Elementary schooler slash middle schooler. Uh, great series. Like, I still remember the entire thing mm-hmm. by heart because I've read it four times. Del Toro was, was probably one of, like, the more mature books to read as, like, a fifth grader. Exactly. Yeah, it was intense. Kid, the books aren't that long. They're maybe, like... Somebody got eaten by a demon. In at, the book. At most, they're like 150 to 200 pages long. My <laughs> type of book! <laughs> type of book. <laughs> yeah, Jared can totally read these. Like Jared can read this, anybody months. can. Um, yeah, it, it goes it goes in three sections, but it's a total of 15 books. The first one's like nine. And the whole point of the book is uh, the main character, Leaf, trying to reassemble the belt of Del Toro. Also, his parents are retarded for naming him that. They called him Leaf. Okay, Leaf. whatever. It's okay. His best friend, Barda. Awesome. <laughs> Also, another terrible name for Strange a child. Strange names for <laughs> fantasy worlds. Um, they they go through the the eight territories of their land called Del Tora. What are you doing? I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> He's bringing up the stupid horn at. Okay. I wasn't going to. No ham horn. I wasn't going to. Whatever. Hey, let, let the man say this plot. 
Deltora, go on. Deltora. It's eight Leaf. sections of Deltora, and Leaf goes to each one of the sections to achieve the gem that goes to the belt. And mm-hmm. the belt is like a magic belt to rid the Deltora of the, the Shadow Lord, who's like the main antagonist, who never shows up ever until the very end. Very end of the last the very book. Very end of the last book. 14.99%. No, whatever. <laughs> Only 14% of the Go through 14.99 of the books until you hit the Shadow Lord, and it's like, whoa, crazy. He, he's, he's uh, as far as villains go, sadistic bastard. Super, super good. Yeah, he had a, he had a, he controlled a territory that was filled with demons, and they had torture chambers. We're in fifth grade reaching, reading about torture chambers ruled by demons. Yeah, they, they like, emerge through, like, the undercity, ver- like, you know exactly yeah, what the, I'm talking about. The Undercity yeah. part of the, Deltora, it's like massive caves, and there's like tribes of people that live down there that they've, they've never they have known or name. existed. They they're did have a name. I don't the remember The Undercast, I want to say. Yeah, but there, there's three clans of them. They're all at war underground mm-hmm. in like subterranean ocean worlds. Exactly. So they, they reemerge in the Shadow Realm, and it's it's like barren wasteland trees are like rot wood and the ground is just cracked dry dirt and there's demons everywhere so, and, and what's this book called del, del taco del, <laughs> del, <laughs> del you just Tora. wanted to ask to be a dick <laughs> boom that's right, the, the entire you have a serious question that wasn't even funny <laughs> <laughs> um it, it's when you guys were talking about that it reminded me of a book that i actually read in uh, i think it was like seventh or eighth grade um it's called sabriel and it's about this girl who I, I think she like fights demons. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Yeah, I'm old. Um, but she has a belt, and each belt has a, or she has a belt with seven bells on them. Each bell opens a different gate to hell. So, oh, seven. That's, seven. that's pretty yeah. awesome. Hell. So if you guys are into, since you're still young, you can read like teen fantasy. Nope. Go mm. for it. Hey, okay, I don't know. If this I is know. gonna sound it's sexist. A joke. It's a joke. No, no, I don't know if this is going to sound sexist, but I can't read a book where the main character is a girl. can't even watch an anime with a man. I, I can't watch an anime with a girl. Where, no, I can watch a few. I've watched some really questionable animes. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, let's not bring that up. We're not but talking anyway, about it. But anyway, I don't... Uh, that's, yeah, I can, I, I can only read, like, certain... I'm very picky about what I want to read. But um, I guess we should start closing up, huh? Let's yeah, I guess probably. so. Yeah, all right. Well, do you have any suggestions for our viewers to read? Uh, Just... House of Leaves, and if you're like 15 or younger, no, go it. read Deltora. You can Deltora. Okay, go read go, it again. Go order the entire set of Deltora. You won't it's, be disappointed. It's on Amazon, too. I, I did check it. It's on Amazon. You can get it for like nine Fantastic minutes. read. You can burn through like a book every two yeah. weeks. If you just want to sit down for a couple minutes, read two weeks a book, you'll be fine. The last year. Jared. Based on what my friends read, I can recommend because they have good taste and stuff. Uh, I would say Black Company. It's been fun. There's another one called uh, The Wheel of Time series. I just, I can't do it myself, but those would be something that I would recommend. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to do Dan Abnett's latest Gaunt's Ghost book. came out, Salvation's Reach. Definitely a good read. It, it uh, exposes some plot holes and uh, definitely gives me that, that fan boner that I've been wanting. Uh, also, a book from when we were kids. It's called The White Stag. Anybody? No? Uh, it explains why uh, three o'clock is the hour of ghosts. If anybody's interested, I That's thought that was cool. I thought that was like a really cool. Like it's it's still stuck with me for a while. Mm. And last but not least, I will go ahead and recommend. Um, this is difficult. I'm gonna say. John, go on thinking of this last <laughs> one. All right. If you're into big words, I say uh, "If on a Way is Not a Traveler" by Atal- Calvino, or uh, if you wanna. Captain Underpants. About. Captain Underpants. All of them. Mm. All of the. Captain I love the flippy parts. No, um, if the flipomatic. If you like psychopaths yeah, and just like really interesting writing and opinionated stuff, then uh, read uh, the Psychopath Test. Very cool. Very interesting. All right. Well, I can't think of the other books, so I'm just gonna remember. go ahead and plug the comic shop again. If anybody forgot who we are, it's uh, Alex. Do you know who we are? Because I kind of forgot already. Right. Adventurable podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're those guys. Oh. Shit. Oh, we are those guys? Apparently. <laughs> unfortunately. They're terrible people. But you know where we're based at, right? Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. No, Seattle. Yes. You're wrong. It's Get out of here, man. Everybody, Las what? Vegas, I've Nevada. I've been living a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we are Cheese Boy Comics in Las Vegas, Nevada, the state with the both extreme summers and the extreme winters. Located in Rainbow and Woodmill, our phone number is 702 938 
5020. We are open every single day of the week. Every day. Every single day. 11, 11 to 7. Including your birthdays. Varies. From 11 a.m. to 7 No, we're closed on Christmas. Fuck, are we? Well, we, we were closed I, on don't Christmas. Don't make yeah. me a liar in front of people. Oh, is that oh, really? Geez. I that, no, that was the was podcast. That that was phone. That I just unlocked my phone. That's all it was. I don't know Whoa. what happened. You know Whoa. what this has been, Jared? This has been the Lunchable Podcast with Chandon Clinton. Ciao, buddy! Alexander Montgomery. Jared Myers. I ruined everything. Yeah. Ruined everything. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Stay in school. Don't be a pleb like Alex. And don't be a pleb like Jared. Jared. We're the Silver State. I, really just I like bees. Goodbye. <laughs>